Good morning and welcome to our Sunday School service. Uh, here before, uh, uh, I'm going to open with a quick word of prayer here. Uh, Lord, we thank you for all that uh, you've done for us, Lord. Uh, God, we ask that you would be with those that have been you know, affected by this uh, pandemic and their families, Lord. Um, you know, specifically, we, we ask that you be with the uh, family of Patsy Cogdell, Lord. Uh, that you would be with them and help them as they go through that uh, through that loss and that mourning, Lord. Uh, but we know that you know, one day we'll, we'll be, uh, I'll rejoin with you, oh God. And God, I ask that you would be you know, with us as yeah, we go through some big changes here with, with our nation, Lord, that, uh, God, you, that you would just uh, you know, allow your, your hand to be on you know, our, our leaders and everything as we uh, transition with uh, you know, the power of your Lord. And God, I ask that you would be with uh, you know, those that, that, that are in your need here, Lord, and all the other leaders of our nation. And God, I ask that you would be with uh, me this morning as, as I go through and you know, read this uh, scripture and that you help us keep focused on on what you want us to keep focused on instead of the things that we see here on earth, Lord. I ask that you would uh, continue to bless us and God direct us, Lord. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Alright, so uh, in today's lesson we're going we're gonna to look at a song from uh, Asaph. And uh, uh, he was a, uh, a Levite and uh, he was from the uh, uh, Kohath division. And so... Uh, you know, before uh, they stopped and had built the temple, their, their job was carrying around the Ark of the Covenant. And uh, in David's day, he assigned some new du duties to the uh, Kohites uh, to replace their, their, their ministry. And Asaph was one of David's uh, chief musicians. And so um, you know, here he, he writes a, a psalm, and, and he, he writes about some things that he struggled with that I'm sure that uh, you know, we, we struggle with as well. It's, it's also something that uh, you know, other authors here in the, uh, in the Bible have questioned. I mean, when you see things uh, you know, in this day, you see the, you know, the wicked seeming to prosper still. I mean, you see these uh, you know, the people that, are, that, are, that you know are wicked you know, still with their, their millions, and, and, and you see them uh, you know, living into, into old age despite doing things like tearing books out of the Bible or pages out of the Bible, things like that. and uh, you, you, you naturally sometimes will have that question. And that's something that, uh, you know, even, even Job had asked. Uh, we can look at uh, 21.7. He says, uh, Wherefore do the wicked live, become old, yea, are mighty in power? And, and Jeremiah, uh, he had uh, also struggled with that. And in Jeremiah 12.1, you know, he, he says to to God, uh, righteous art thou, O Lord, uh, when I plead with thee, yet let me talk with thee of thy judgments. Wherefore doth the way of the wicked prosper? Uh, wherefore are all the happy that, that deal very treacherously? Treacherously. So it, it, it's something that you know we we all ask. We we see these things, and uh, you know sometimes we're tempted to ask these things. But uh, you know as as we'll see uh, you know, through here, uh, Asaph deals with that, and then he. Uh, you know, his, his attitude kind of changes as he as he starts to uh, you know, look further and you know, have a closer relationship here with God. And so I'm going to start with uh, verses uh, one through uh, three, and we'll uh, I guess we'll just start with verse one here, and then uh, we'll go on. All right. So it says, uh, "Truly, God is good to Israel, even such that are of a clean heart." And so, uh, you know, he, he sees that just how good God has been to them. You know, he, he's been here when they have the, uh, you know, when they're starting to you know, build these sanctuaries and starting to look at the uh, temple. And, and you know, he, he's seen the things that, uh, you know, God has done through, you know, through his, his work. You know, they're, they're there at Mount Zion and uh, it's established the capital of the nation. Um, you know, it's, it's when the uh, kingdom is unified. You know, the, the, all these great blessings. You know, he can recount the goodness of God through through things that you know he's seen happen through us, uh, you know, past scripture. You know, he, he's he's looked at them being released from bondage. You know, God guiding them through the wilderness and bringing them into the promised land. You know, he's he's uh, he's read and, and, and see, seen these fulfillments of God's promises from the past. And uh, you know, he, he he also acknowledges that you know Israel is uh, you know. Getting these blessings not because there's 
you know, any, anything you know, special about them, but because of, per se, as far as a nation, but because, you know, God has, has chosen them to, to show his power. And uh, then, uh, you know, next he, he looks at uh, talking about a, a clean heart. Um, you know, he, that, that God's doing that to this, this people that are uh, of a clean heart. And that word uh, clean can also be translated as pure or integrity. I mean, it's, it's things that we're looking at if, um, you know, in, uh, in metal work, for example. Like if you have uh, pure gold, you know, when you, when you grade gold, you, know, have, you have 10, you have 14, and 24 carat. And the larger the, the, larger the number of carat, the purer it is. You know, the, the, it shows that it's just all gold. You know, they've taken out all the other elements, and it's just gold itself. And so... Um, and, and its connection to the heart, that's where we, we you know, see uh, our word integrity uh, you know, come in. And so we see that uh, God's goodness is bestowed upon his people who have integrity. And uh, you know, like I said, God had chosen Israel not for any you know, particular you know, virtue as a nation, uh, but because uh, you know, he, could, he could see that you know, they were going to be, uh, you know, you know, loving him and following him to you know, show his great power. Uh, so if we look back in, uh, in you know, Deuteronomy here for a second, verse 7, I'm going to read uh, you know, some of these uh, verses here. I'm going to start in verse uh, chapter 7. I'm going to start in verse 6 here. It says, uh, For thou art an holy people unto the Lord thy God. The Lord thy God hath chosen thee to be a special people unto himself, above all people that are upon the face of the earth. The Lord did not set his love upon you, nor choose you, because you were more in number than any people, for you were the fewest. But because the Lord loved you, and because he would keep the oath which he has sworn unto your fathers, hath the Lord brought you out of a mighty hand, and redeemed you out of the house of the bondmen, from the hand of Pharaoh the king. And you know, this again, you know, the, showing how good God is. Know therefore that the Lord thy God, he is God, the faithful God, which keepeth the covenant and mercy with them that love him and keep his commandments to a thousand generations. And uh, here we go into the uh, integrity part. And he repayeth them that hate to their face to destroy them. He, he will not be slack to him that hateth him. He will repay him to his face. Thou shalt therefore keep the commandments and the statutes and the judgments which I command thee this day to them. Wherefore it shall come to pass, if ye hearken to these judgments, and keep and do them, that the Lord thy God shall keep unto thee the, the covenant and the mercy he swore unto, the, unto thy fathers. And he will love thee, and he will bless thee, and he will multiply thee. He will also bless the fruit of thy womb, and the fruit of thy land, thy corn, thy wine, thy oil, increase thine kind, and the flock of thy sheep, and the land which he swore unto your fathers to give thee. Thou shalt be blessed above all people. There shall not be male nor female buried among you or among your cattle. And so talking, you know, goes into that, that blessing and those, uh, you know, them keeping, you know, his statutes and commandments, you know, that integrity and that pure heart. And uh, Asaph recognized that, uh, you know, you needed that clean heart in order to, uh, to be, to keep enjoying God's favor. You know, grace is uh, extended into the, uh, you know, onto the faithful uh, and, you know, because we, we all fall short. And if we go into, uh, you know, another, again, you know, another one of the Psalms, it's later, you know, repeated in, in Romans, uh, in Psalm uh, 14, and uh, we'll read 1 through 3 here. Uh, the fool hath said in his heart, there is no God. Uh, they are corrupt. They have done abominable works. There is none that doeth good. The Lord looketh down from heaven upon the children of men to see that uh, there were any that, that did understand and seek God. They are all gone aside. They are all together become filthy. There is none that doeth good. No, not one. And you know, and again, we would be looking at Romans, and that's where you know Paul repeats that, and he said, and he you know, emphasizes that there is none that seeketh after God. So, uh, and we're reminded that even the even the great saints like uh, have received grace from God because it. They didn't deserve it. If we go back into uh, in, uh, Genesis and uh, we look at, let, let's take Noah for example. Uh, in uh, Genesis 6 8, but Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. 
And again, that's you know something that he that he didn't that he didn't earn. You know, so you know God will you bestow His grace, but uh, you know to keep in His favor, uh, you know we want to keep you know working for Him is uh, you know is, is what we're looking at with that, that clean heart. And then in a, you know again in Exodus, let's go into Exodus and as we uh, talk about you know, Moses also in Exodus uh, 33 and uh, 17. And the Lord said unto to Moses, I will do this thing also that thou hast spoken, for thou hast found grace in my sight, and I know thee by name. And so, you know, if a clean heart you know, only is, is required, then, uh, you know, then, then, we're, then we're in trouble here. Uh, you know, because uh, as, as Jeremiah had, had spoken in uh, Jeremiah 17, and uh, verse 9, you know, the... The heart, uh, the heart can be pretty wicked. So let's look at uh, let's look at that. And uh, Jeremiah seventeen nine it says, "The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it?" All right. So we see that uh, you know, again, if it was it was up to just us, we, we'd be in trouble. But you know, we want once we have come to the knowledge of God, we want to keep uh, you know, in, in those things and uh, keep uh, you know, following after Him. And then uh, let's go on to uh, you know, verses 2 and 3, and here's where the uh, conflict comes in for Asaph. Or Asaph uh, uh, but as for me, my feet were almost gone. My steps had, had well nigh slipped, for I was envious at the foolish when I saw the prosperity of the wicked. And so, uh, you know, we, we look here and let's, uh, you know, he, he's, he's seen all these things and seen all these teachings like in Psalm 1 where it talks about, you know, the wicked being as, as, as chaff. And uh, you know, he expected to see something immediately uh, that come about because of what they had done. And uh, we, we see that the uh, disciples also struggled with that same, with that same thinking uh, when we look at uh, John John 9 and uh, verses uh, 1 through 12, I'll, I'll read all of it, but that's where they ask about, uh, you know, the man, the man was blind, was it his sin or was it because of his parents' sin? You know, he, they expected something to be, you know, immediate right then, that the God would smite somebody for, for, what, for what was done. And, uh, and we look at both... Uh, you know, Job's comforters and uh, Jesus' disciples understood that the blessings uh, of righteousness and judgment on the wicked and that there were, there were no exceptions. Um, you know, but however, you know, his experience, Asaph's experience here was painting another picture. You know, the, the wicked was prospect, prospering and it uh, seemed undeniable. And so uh, you know, he struggled with that. And we, and we look here at the, uh, in verse 2, we look at the word you know, slipped. You know, my, my, my steps had, had well, nine had slipped. That means to pour out or, or spill. Um, so it's like the ground of his faith was spilling or being poured out uh, because of this. You know, he, he began to envy those that were foolish. And again, that points back to uh, Psalm 14, 1, where it was talking about, you know, the fool saying in their heart, there, there is no God. So he's, he's seeing that, uh, you know, these, these things are happening and, and you know, the wicked are prospering, and he's 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 wanting to know why, and, and is uh, struggling with that. That's and that's something that you know we we can we continue to, to struggle with. But uh, you know, as we go on to these uh, next you know, verses here, you know he he goes through some of these specific observations uh, as to you know why he's he's asking these questions, and then uh, we'll, we'll wrap up at at the end with. Uh, a little bit of a change in attitude. All right, so let's uh, go on, and I'm going to read uh, verses uh, 4 through uh, 9. For there are no bands in their death, but their strength is firm. They are not in trouble as other men, neither are they plagued like other men. Therefore, pride can pass about them as a chain, violence com covereth them as a garment. Their eyes stand out with fatness. They have more than heart could wish. They are corrupt, speaking wickedly concerning oppression. They speak loftily. They set their mouth against the heavens, and their tongue walketh through the earth. 
And so he's, he's seeing this in, uh, you know, he, he uses the word uh, prosperity, and he, he used that in verse 3, and that word prosperity is, a, is the same word that uh, in Hebrew that they use as a typical greeting of shalom. Uh, and that's the uh, peace. And so um, and these foolish people seem to have full lives. You know, they're, they're, they're not worried about the, you're not, not immediately smitten with that torturous death. And, you know, they don't seem to, to be concerned with it. They wear their pride as some sort of an ornament. You know, they're like, like they're ordained with it. They're clothed with injustice and violence. You know, they're, you know, they're, 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 there's no limits to what, uh, you know, what their pride will allow them to do. And, these, uh, and the worst part of it is, is these foolish or wicked people keep talking about, uh, about it. If you look at you know, 8 and 9, you see that uh, how many times it's mentioned that they, that they speak and, uh, and how they speak, and wickedly and loftily. And, uh, and in verse 9, it goes on that they set their mouths against the heaven. That, is, that means that they talk and start to blaspheme God because they haven't been you know, smit, uh, you know, immediately smitten yet. And then... Uh, we go on to uh, verse uh, uh, 10 here, and he, he says, uh, Therefore his people returned hither, and the waters of a full cup are wrung out to them. And they say, How doth God know? And is there knowledge in the Most High? Behold, these are the ungodly who prosper in this world. They increase in riches. And so in all this effect had a, or all this that he's seeing has an effect on Asaph, and he starts to... Uh, you know, begin you know begin asking you know the, the general uh, these these things. So uh, where it says in verse ten, that his people were turned hither. You know the the, the public of uh, of Israel is beginning to to ask um, and believe that, that you know God uh, is just God turn, just turning a blind eye to man's sin. Does he not know man's sin? And uh, it, it's it's easy to identify with uh, Ace of struggle struggle. He, he probably. Witness the revolt of Absalom in uh, 2 Samuel 15, uh, you know, and the cursing of uh, Shimei in uh, 2 Samuel 16. So you know, he's seen these offenses, and uh, and, and you know, maybe others that the Bible hasn't recorded. And so at, at, at times it was appearing as if there was no consequences for the for the wicked and, and what they were doing. Uh, but you know, there there is a reckoning. It's just according to God's time frame. It's not according to ours. You know, it's uh, you know, we need to try to keep from thinking like Asaph that uh, you know we need to walk by faith, not by sight. And uh, you know, when we see that prosperity of the wicked, it begins to feel unfair. Um, you know, we get frustrated when lawbreakers go unpunished, you know, we're, and you know, we can get tempted to take the laws into our own hands. But you know, that's something that uh, God has uh, you know. You know, reminded us on several occasions that uh, that he takes care of that. So if we if we look specifically, let's uh, turn over to Romans here, and uh, you know, Romans twelve and uh, verse nineteen. And it says, "Dearly beloved, avenge not yourselves, but rather give place unto wrath." For it is written, "Vengeance is mine; I will repay," saith the Lord. Amen. You know, so that's something that you know God will take care of. Uh, you know, we sh and we shouldn't mistake you know his his patience that he that he gives uh, us as as him being slack. Uh, so if we look into uh, you know Second Peter here, I'll flip over to it really quickly, and Second uh, Peter verses uh, in chapter three and verses uh, seven through uh, ten. It says, uh, But the heavens and the earth, which are now by the same word, are kept in store, reserved into fire against the day of judgment and perdition of a godly man. But, beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing, that the day, that one day is with the Lord as a thousand years, and a thousand years is one day. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some count slackness, but is long suffering toward us, not willing that any should perish, but all should come to repentance. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. The earth shall also, and the works that are therein shall be burned up. So, you know, make, make no mistake, you know, he's, he's giving us all this time for us to repent and, uh, you know, to come to him. It's, it's not because he's, he's slack, because the, the day of the Lord is coming, and, you know, he'll, he'll wipe everything out and, and uh, create all things new. 
right, so, uh, and now we, we go into the, the uh, you know, final uh, part of you know, Asaph's crisis here, and we go into uh, verses uh, 13 through uh, 15. It says, uh, Verily have I cleansed my heart in vain, washed my hands in innocent. For all the day long I have been plagued and chastised, chast ch chastened every morning. If I say I will speak thus, behold, I should offend against the generation of thy children. Yeah, so, so here's his, his, his crisis of faith. You know, he's, he's seeing these things happen. He's still living according to uh, you know, what God has asked. And uh, it's not coming up with the expected result. And he thinks that all of this has been in vain. Uh, yeah, he, he expected God to bless him in a tangible way for, for his efforts. And, uh, and you know, he also expected and the, the belief that the other side of the coin was true, that he would judge and judge swift, swiftly of the... Uh, you know, God's enemies here. And uh, you know, these, these expected things that he had thought aren't, aren't occurring in the time frame that he, should, he thought it should be occurring in at that time. And so um, you know, here he is with this conflict, and you know, how is he going to resolve this? This is, uh, you know, in verse 16, you know, he, you know, he looks and, and talks about it, uh, that this conflict that's in him. You know, he, he's saying that... Uh, when I thought to know this, it was it was painful um, uh, for me. You know that, that that same that same word "painful" is uh, you know, can also be translated as as uh, you know, miserable, and you know that that's something that you know again Job had had struggled with. We can see that same word used in uh, in Job in sixteen and verse two. Or it says that, uh, you know, I've heard many such things. Miserable comforters are you all. So, you know, he's, he's, Job is also worried by that, uh, you know, those thoughts of not necessarily bad behavior results in uh, judgment. But in this case, you know, the, the, his good behavior was, was being re rewarded with uh, some, you know, very trying things. And, and uh, you know, he, was, he wasn't understanding that. And, uh, he was one, and so here we have Asaph wondering, now, why is he not judging the wicked? And then it, he goes on in uh, verse 15, he talks about this question, and he says that uh, you know, he, he can't, he can't uh, you know, articulate it, he can't talk about it, basically. Okay? And uh, he uses the word uh, that I should offend against the generation of thy children. That word offend means you know, deal treacherously with or uh, depart treacherously from. So... You know, he feels that he would be you know, coming against God if he was to come, and ask, come out and ask these questions. And uh, you know, he's going to struggle with it. And, you know, the reason he's struggling with this is you know, we're, we're blessed with you know, what's going to happen with the afterlife of the New Testament. It's been you know, ex explained to us. Uh, whereas uh, you know, the Old Testament, it, you know, everything was pointing toward it, but it was, it was less clear. And so... Uh, you know, that that's where he struggled with it. So they expected that swift judgment upon the, the wicked. You know, we we have that you know innate sense of justice. You know, we expect that uh, you know good to conquer evil. And uh, when we suffer doubt and despair, we when we see injustice, well, we need to learn patience and rely on, on God's timing, uh, on, on and His goodness, and trust in His goodness that He will take care of this. Uh, because it, you know, it helps to remember that we're going to have to give an account, you know, to uh, of ourselves and God, and others will have to do the same. So if we look at uh, a good example here with uh, you know, Romans, we, if we turn over to uh, Romans 14 and verse uh, 12, you know, we're running here in the New Testament. Uh, so then, every one of us shall give an account of himself to God, Amen. and that's something that you know everyone's going to have to. Uh, Come to, and uh, we see that uh, you know Asaph is he begins to change his tune as he realizes, and uh, we're working through this the, the, the same thing, uh, the same kind of thing. And so we go on to uh, verse uh, 16 here, and it says, uh, "When I thought to know this, it was too painful for me, until I went to the sanctuary of God. Then understood I their end. Surely thou didst set." them in the slippery places 
Thou castest them down to destruction? How are they brought into desolation? As in a moment, they are utterly consumed with terrors. As, as a dream when one awaketh, so, O Lord, when thou awakest, thou shalt despise their image. Thus my heart was grieved, and I was pricked in my reins. So foolish was I, and ignorant. I was as a beast before thee. Nevertheless, I am continually with thee. Thou hast holden me by my right hand. Thou shalt guide me with thy counsel, and afterwards receive me to glory. Whom, whom have I in heaven but thee? And there is none upon the earth that I desire beside me. My flesh and my heart faileth, but God is the strength of my heart and my portion forever. For lo, that they are far from thee shall perish, destroyed all them that go whoring from thee. But it is good for me to draw near to God. I have put my trust in the Lord that I may, that I may declare all thy works. And, and so, uh, you know, verse 16, he's, he's talking about this, how it was, you know, again, yeah, too, uh, too painful for him. When he when he seeks to know that, and so uh, what, so what did he do? He goes into uh, you know the, the sanctuary of God. You know we don't know if that's uh, uh, you know the tabernacles or its courts. So, like you know we, we know it's not you know literally the sanctuary because uh, you know Levi wouldn't have been allowed in there, uh, or just some uh, you know, symbolic holy place. But either way, the, we can see that he's seeking the presence of God, and he, he comes to the presence of God. And in the presence of God, and uh, you know, with that fellowship, he come to understood, understand. You know, that word "understood" means to you know, make clear. It uh, it means to see. So he you know he sees their end, and uh, and that you know they the wicked may prosper now, but there's going to be a day of reckoning. You know, he he sees that. Uh, you know as he um, you know gets uh, you know, close and and speaks with God, and then uh, you know, he goes on to say that. Uh, he set them in the in these slippery places, uh, and so uh, you know, they're unaware of the danger. You're, they're going to be tripped up, and they're going to they're going to fall. This will be sudden, you know, as in a moment, just almost instantaneous. And you know, as we see that you know, there's no substitute for spending time with God and, and, and coming to understand things. And uh, you know, viewing viewing the wicked in, in this way is you know, in these slippery places that they, you know they don't see what's coming. You know, it, it helps us to have more compassion, to be able to you know, talk to them about you know, what how good God is and what God can do for them. You know, that, those slippery places. It's uh, an idea of this smoothness that kind of just uh, you know, tricks them in tricks, tr tricks them into thinking that they have a good foothold, but it's not a good foothold. And then, uh, you know, that, that same word is used, to, you know, again, in, in Jeremiah. You know, we can, we can use that, uh, you know, contra or, you know, get further here. And uh, Jeremiah 23, uh, 12, it says, uh, Wherefore their way shall be unto them as slippery ways in the darkness. They shall be driven on and fall therein. For I will bring evil upon them, even in the year of their visitation, saith the Lord. So... You know, again, you know, they're, they're in the dark, they're in these slippery places, they can't see what's coming, and then they slip and fall. And so, uh, you know, he, he, Asaph now sees that his envy was misplaced. And, uh, and we can see that the... Yeah, you know, next, it talks about the, the, abrupt, the abruptness of you know, God's response. You know, as in that moment, uh, you know, as a dream when, 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 when one awakens, you know, it's like that, that startling when you just you suddenly wake up from a, from a dream. Now, that's not, uh, and, you know, it also uses that, uh, you know, saying when, when thou awakest, you know, however, you know, God, God doesn't sleep. You know, we can look at uh, Psalm uh, 121 and uh, verse 4. And it says, uh, Behold, he that keepeth Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. So, you know, it's not saying that you know, God's asleep. It's just saying that he, how, how quickly it is or when he, when he decides to act, it's going to be quick. You know, in just, you know, in just a few moments. And then uh, we go on to uh, verse 21. And it says, My heart was picked. It was, you know, Grieved. You know, that word also means like you know, grow. Uh, it means to you know, grow, grow sour. 
and then it talks about being a, a pricked in a, pricked in my reins. You know, that's that like basically feeling a stinging pain. You know, it, we, we see that he has that uh, you know conviction of the way that he was thinking, and that, and he he feels that conviction for it, and you know, he's he's ready to come to repentance on, on that because of you know, how how he's how he's thought. And then we look at, uh, you know, as we go on here, the, you know, talking about being foolish and ignorant, uh, you know, it's a beast. And then in, uh, you know, verse, uh, you know, 23, we, you know, we look on and it says that, you know, I'm continually with thee, you know, thou holdest me by my right hand. And, you know, that, that reminds me of, you know, like a, like a father, you know, holding on to their, holding their, the hand, hand of their child and leading them through here. You know, that's just, uh, and we were, we were talking about, you know, God's counsel. So, uh, as it goes on, thou shalt guide me with thy counsel. So, not only is it talking about scriptures, but also the, the spirit of God. And, uh, it, you know, its influence on that. We can look at Isaiah in uh, 30 and verse uh, 21. And thine ears shall hear a word behind thee, saying that this is the way, walk ye in it. When you turn to the right hand and when you turn to the left hand, you know, so that spirit of God will also be guiding them. And then uh, when we look on at that last part where it says, we're you know, receiving the glory, and we were talking about earlier how there wasn't a real clear understanding of exactly what the afterlife would be. They knew that they would have one, but it was unclear. Uh, so this uh, too would actually be uh, you know, better, better translated as, as with, as a lot of Hebrew scholars will say. And uh, so it would be you know, with glory, meaning you know, God's blessing upon him. And then in verse 25, it says, you know, Whom have I in heaven and earth? Uh, it's maybe hard for us to understand that, but at the time, uh, there were a lot of you know, these false religions, and they had gods for everything. You know, they had gods for the field. They had gods for the sun. They had gods for the, the rain and the wind. And so you know, this just reinforces that you know, the God of Abraham, you know, our God, is the one true God. And that he's realized that. And then we, you know, in verse uh, 26, you know, we don't know how old Asaph is, but you know, at this, at, you know, at this point, you know, he's he's either experiencing or has seen, uh, you know, the effects of age on a person. You know, the, the, you know, his my flesh will fail, and my heart faileth. You know, his physical body and his uh, you know, his his emotional stability or will, will will fail him. But, but God is going to be the one to give him the, the strength of his heart and you know help him with the with uh, you know, his physical ailments you know, going forward here. He's, he's the one that's going to take him and, and help him through this life. And then in uh, verse 27, it says, uh, it goes on to say that, uh, that they are that far shall perish, and those that you know, aren't with God or have departed from God or will, will perish. You know, they're going to meet their end. And then, uh, interestingly, it says, you know, thou hast destroyed all them that go whoring from thee. And and uh, you know we're we're looking at the covenant as is what it's speaking of, and uh, you know the covenant would be like a the closest thing we have to it is is marriage, and so um, you know that that's why it's 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 going on to that. If we look at uh, in Second Corinthians, you know, a good example that explains it. Second uh, Corinthians of uh, chapter eleven, verse two. It says, uh, "For I am jealous over you with a godly jealousy." For I have espoused you to one husband that I may present you as a chaste virgin to Christ. So, you know, the, the church is to be married, you know, spiritually to, you know, to Christ. And so, if you have went and went after other gods, then you've basically committed spiritual adultery. And that's, that's how it's, you know, looked at there. And that's what it's talking about. And then, uh, you know, he ends, he ends this way. But it is good for me to draw near to God... I have put my trust in the Lord that I may declare all thy works. So uh, you know, he sees that he needs to draw closer to God and commune with him, have that better relationship with him, you know, put his trust in him, and then uh, you know, going beyond that, that he wants to go out and tell, tell everybody just how good God is and what God has done for him. And so uh, you know, I hope that uh, through this, that we've this you know, lesson here where we've talked about you know, struggling with the uh, you know, wicked that you know, we too can go through and, and look at the same things in the same ways that you know, Asaph has looked at and we would be able to declare 
just how good God is through his works by drawing nearer to him and you know, focusing on what he wants us to do. And uh, I hope you can take that through this week, and God bless you all.